Hi, I'm Painter Master Elite Karen Boniker, and I would like to show you a new brush pack for Painter Essential 6 called Fine Art Essentials. I'd like to begin by showing you some of the brushes included in this pack and how you can incorporate them into your landscape paintings. So let's get started. When you load the Fine Art Essentials brush pack, you'll find it located at the bottom of your brush category hierarchy. The first brush in this pack is called Ambiance. Let's pick a color here on our color wheel. And I always like to begin with uh, the reset tool which is on the property bar and we can simply select that and make sure our brush is at the default settings. We now have a grain setting which can be quite nice in uh, selecting a paper texture and having that grain appear in the brush. So you can see this is kind of a wild and crazy brush. I use this quite often to begin uh, creating atmospheric conditions such as clouds, fog, mists in my landscape paintings. You can go on to um, uh, bring the opacity up on the opacity slider if you want that to be a little darker and you can see how the brush uh, works. Um, another uh, brush companion to this would be one of your blender brushes where you can go in and soften the edges and help to form and create the look of clouds and fog. The next brush in this brush pack is called the blender brush and what I'm going to do here is go back to the ambient, uh, ambiance brush and then we'll go to the blender brush and we'll reset that tool making sure it's at default and you can see how this brush softly blends the edges so it creates a nice brush again uh, a brush for creating uh, lovely blending capabilities uh, soft appearances uh, another way that you could utilize this brush would be to go to your toolbar here, select a oval selection tool, and we'll just go ahead and say, for example, we wanted to create a moon or a sun in the sky. We'll go back to our ambiance brush and maybe get a nice color here. And say, for example, we wanted to create a blending of that those colors. Then we could go back to the blender brush and softly blend those edges out wherever we wanted to. Control D or Command D to remove the selection. And we have a nice looking sun in the sky or a moon would be another option here. So that's the blender brush. The detail brush I will go into shortly. Um, the uh, pastel sky and we're going to come down to a brush down here called soft. This brush um, is also another lovely brush for uh, for creating the look of um, fog and clouds um, and you can see that just with very very light pressure you can create this very nice effect. Uh, also is a good brush if you're creating waves on the ocean uh, you can use it at different sizes so you can max it out and go quite large with it and really fill in a lot of uh, the canvas with this brush. So another nice brush for the use of perhaps clouds, fogs, mists, and oceans, water planes. This brush is called Sketchy and uh, we'll go ahead and pick a color here and you can see that it's really kind of a, one of those typical um, particle brushes. Let's go ahead and reset the tool, bring it back to default, and you can see that uh, it really kind of has a mind of its own. It's, it's a fun brush to play with, uh, very expressive, and if you just apply texture to, uh, pressure to the stylus, you can see that the brush rather moves around on its own. So another fun brush to work with. This brush is called Sketch, and we'll go to Sketch, 
And this brush is just a nice, fine sketching brush, uh, very expressive. Um, you can use it to begin, for example, a landscape painting, um, you know, block in your basic shapes. So another beautiful brush for um, uh, working in Painter Essential 6. The next brush we're going to take a look at is called Sheer. And we'll reset that tool. And you can see that this one is uh, a, a very, very sheer type of almost like fabric brush. Very, very uh, lovely uh, Painter Essentials brush. The next brush we have is Rainbow. And let's go ahead and reset that tool as well. And this one you can see paints in various colors. And is very, very expressive. So a fun brush to play with in terms of lots of bright color and expression. The next brush we're going to take a look at is called Pastel Skies. And we'll go ahead and reset the tool on this one as well. And uh, this one um, I like very much as well. It creates uh, a beautiful effect, um, especially if you're looking to create or start to build the look of clouds in the sky. So another fun, fun brush to work with. Let's go ahead and close this now. And we're going to open up this landscape painting. And this has all been done uh, with the Painter Essential brushes. And um, I just find working in Painter Essentials to be quite fun. Uh, nothing stressful about it. It just gives you a chance to jump in there and do nothing but paint uh, with some very, very fine brushes. Uh, the brushes that are included in this brush pack can do just about everything for you. Um, lots of fun to work with. So let's start, uh, let's start, a, uh, and I'm going to show you some of the brushes that I incorporated into this painting so you understand how I use them. Um, the brush, there's a brush called Flow Fur uh, uh, that I used for grasses. And we'll go ahead and go to that brush. And that would be in the particle brush category, particles. And it's called Flow Fur. And I like doing these on layers so you can basically see. But say, for example, I wanted to uh, build some uh, the look of maybe some tall grasses in the in the uh, foreground here. And I can do that with this brush by simply kind of going back and forth. And this really is a nice brush for just creating that look of soft flowing grasses. Go a little darker in the corners here. And I, you'll notice that I'm using my Alt key to sample colors throughout the image. And I think I have a nice uh, representation of color in those grasses. Let's go now to the clouds. And the brush that I used here for the clouds is called the Detail Oils. And you'll find that brush in the Fine Art Essentials. And it is called Detail Oils. Now, this brush, um, the way that I use this is I used it to build. Um, so I'm going to just show you here how I use this to build the outside of the cloud. And this is where 
It's just a small, rather small, circular motion to just build up the edges of the cloud in the lightest value. And um, when I developed this painting, I was always thinking about where my light source was coming from. So my heaviest light source, I felt, was coming from the upper right-hand side. So these tops of the clouds will be just nice and bright. It helps to develop the form of the clouds. And then once I've gotten my clouds basically built, um, the brush that I would use then to uh, soften these edges, and what I'm going to do now is drag this down, and I'm actually going to drop this to the canvas layer. And the brush I'm going to pick here is going to come from the Blender's Brush category, and it's going to be the Just Add Water Brush. And I use that brush now just to very, very softly pull those edges out and soften them into the, into the edge of the clouds. So I'm always pulling slightly away from the lightest color and trying to leave that very, very bright edge which keeps the form of that cloud intact. The brush that I like to use for creating rain, the brush that we're going to use for the look of rain coming down is called Sketchy, and it's from the Fine Art Essential. And uh, the way that you would use this would be with a rather large brush tip size, and then you just want to focus it in the direction that you want those uh, you want those rain, that appearance of rain coming down to, uh, to look. So you can see that I'm just kind of pulling in the look of rain here coming down on our landscape scene. The nice thing about Painter Essentials also is that we have an opacity slider and we can also control our composite method. The opacity, when I bring it down, gives it a little bit lighter look so it's it's more subtle and I think that that's basically the look that I'm looking for. I didn't want anything too strong but just maybe that indication or that subtleness that there might be a rain shower taking place at that time. The next brush we're going to look at is called um, Grainy and you're also going to find that in the Fine Art Essentials. And I use this brush quite often for the development of the tree shapes. So again, I'll often use the uh, colors that are present uh, in the scene and simply sample those colors and help and use this brush to basically get the, the form of the trees, uh, the direction of the light in uh, what I'm looking for in, the, uh, in these particular trees. This also can be used to, um, uh, you know, to, to create shadow effects throughout the painting. So if you needed to uh, bring in a few more shadows in certain parts of the piece in your landscapes, it has a very nice painterly quality to it and very easy brush uh, to work with. I also used it uh, with a little bit of texture just to imply the effect of maybe some poppies uh, within, the, within the pasture uh, that you see here.
And then I could certainly go in and do a little bit of soft blending. We'll use that just to add water again. And we do want to make sure that when we're working on a layer that we go ahead and drop that layer. Or you can simply use your drop option which is on the layers panel here. And then we can go ahead and do all our nice fine blending right on that layer. Okay, um, so that is really the um, uh, how I would use most of these brushes. Uh, again, I find that uh, the ability to use these particle-based brushes uh, inside Painter Essentials opens up a lot of new possibilities for painting. And again, I want to point out that these brushes work uh, in harmony with the default brushes that are found in Painter Essentials 6. So go off, have some fun, paint some beautiful paintings, and enjoy. Thank you.